the following video is a recording from the Artist Feedback AMA featuring travel and storytelling photography hosted by Mike Schmidt and Yulia Denzik, held in MetaJungle Discord on May 19th, 2022. The purpose of these AMA sessions is to provide honest feedback to artists concerning collection curation, descriptions, and other helpful information to make their collections successful. This is a wonderful opportunity for artists and collectors to learn and grow together, and we hope you enjoy. Welcome to our AMA, guys. This one's actually on um, on travel and storytelling. Storytelling is not a category that we've put out recently, but a lot of people who do documentary are also doing storytelling, but Yulia is really, really good at um, traveling, making work, and understanding, like, the storytelling of those specific regions that she goes to. So she's kind of perfect for this. And so I just wanted to introduce her um, to professional travel photographer and writer, right? A storyteller. Um, and she's been featured in Time, um, Nat Geo Travel, Condé Nast. And what is, what is, um, what is hashtag? Uh, oh, you just have hashtag women in NFTs, but that's not um, a publication or anything, right? That's just a movement. Which is a good yes. movement. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, because we want to see more women in NFTs because it's like, I it feel like it's predominantly uh, males. But lately, I don't know, I've been seeing a lot of females in um, the NFT space. And it's really awesome to, uh, to see that, like uh, photographers and digital artists, graphic designers and stuff. And very cool. And so you were ex-military. What military were you again? Um, I, was, uh, I was in the U.S. Navy. I was an aviation data analyst in the U.S. Navy. Wow, amazing. So you said, wait, you said what type of data analyst? Aviation. So we worked on uh, uh, aircraft that drums uh, electronic communications. So we worked wow. with intelligence most of the time. Awesome. So I was, um, I did 10 years. I was in the U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, and I no was way. a search and, yeah, search and rescue controller. And so... Um, we would, you know, in the Coast Guard, it's more, you know, the, the borders of the homeland. So a lot of it's search and rescue. And so we would get a lot of, um, we get a lot of calls from, you know, vessels that were out on, on the, uh, on the ocean and they were on fire or, uh, missing, missing surfers, um, vessels that were taking on water on the boat and sinking and stuff like that. And so, um, I, I would, I initially, I was taking the 911 calls and, you know, asking how many passengers on board and what's the, what's your, uh, your nature of the stress, what's your emergency and what's your latitude, longitude and gathering all that information. And then I sort of moved up the ranks a little bit. And then I started to become like the brains behind the operations where I would, um, you know, figure out what the situation was. And then, so say it's a missing surfer, then I'd have to figure out, um, you know, what the, what the, uh, what the wind, um, miles per hour was the, the knots in wind and how which way the current was going and i'd have to sort of write up a search plan based on where the surfer was last found and um you know the search uh, the search plan would be written in a way that would be uh, i guess most efficient for us to send out helicopters and small boats to be able to find uh, find those people so really cool it's got a similar similar sort of background Wow! Yes, we have to. We'll, we'll have to talk about that more. That's. Uh, it feels yeah. like it was another another life now for me. You know, it's just so different from. <laughs> it's from another me. life for sure. Like, um, I find it crazy when people, you know, not crazy, but people ask this question, and people ask this question on like interviews and stuff, and they'll say like, "Where do you see yourself five years from now?" And I always think like. Ooh, this is a really hard question to answer because like five years ago, I was like this completely different person. Five years ago before that, I was this completely different person. It's sort of like you evolve over that amount of time. And I, I can't really tell you who I think I'm going to be in five years from now. Other than the fact that I think I'll be involved in art. I'm most, I, I mean, I, I hope and, and, you know, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be involved in art. So. <laughs> But. Yeah, I think just uh, and and not to not to take over this conversation with the military experience, but I think one of the things that it it, it gives you is this incredible ability to to work under pressure and to make decisions that are 
impacting someone's life, you know, and I, I don't know, it just gives you such perspective on everything. Um, we, we were deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan as part of our work. So it was, I mean, I, I will probably never get to do something like this again, you know, so it, it was yeah. really and really also, incredible. also like maybe giving you a discipline within your own, your own yes. work as well, you know, sure. providing this layer. I didn't have any discipline before I went. I was kind of like a street kid. And when I went, I realized, oh, wow, this is serious. These guys are yelling in my face. I have to do push-ups. I have to be scolded. I have to do all this stuff. I have to be on time. And then, um, yeah, and you can apply that maybe to art and say, you know, I really haven't been, been doing it enough or I really haven't buckled up on no no yeah looks at this discipline aspect but cool um so i want to give you like a little introduction and and so wait where so where are you now because i know you're always I'm, traveling uh, i'm in chicago now where i'm based at the moment although i'm moving to barcelona if everything goes well by the end of the year so i'll be based in barcelona Ooh, that sounds beautiful barcelona seems like a really beautiful city of art and culture and food and Beautiful people and everything. Yeah, it sounds like a cool place. And, and the weather that's much warmer than Chicago, which is a, yeah. one of my main main motivations. <laughs> cool. All right, so um, let's move on to the artists. So today I actually wrote down all the artists' names and their because uh, he, here's something that I that I realized today, and I made a tweet about this today. Um, if you have uh, if you have a collection on OpenSea, then you should absolutely have your artist's name and a link to your Twitter or so. And I'm not calling out this specific one because there's a lot in here. But like, um, if you look on here, over here, this is where you can put your links. And so artist only has an Instagram link. I don't know, maybe artist only has Instagram. But if you do have Twitter and some other social media platforms and a website, it's definitely smart to, um, to put those in there. Because, you know, as a collector, um, you know, I'm not the biggest collector, but I am a collector. But if I collect from someone, I usually, you know, I usually go to their Twitter, see what it looks like, see what their activity looks like. I usually go to their website, see how it's laid out and um, read about them a bit and stuff. And so in a lot of the collections today, um, it's difficult for me to, um, you know, even read through the artist statement and like find the artist's name or go into a photograph and, um, and find the artist's name. And so... Um, so the artist here today for this uh, for symbols of love is actually uh, Sabia Sachi, um, but it's you know it's a little difficult for me to find the name. I mean, it does say owned by Sabia Sachi, and you know, sometimes that's not enough because not everyone's open sea name is actually their artist name. And so, if your open sea name wasn't your artist name, it would be pretty difficult to be able to find your. Um, your uh, your name and some information about you. So I think that's a good point. To, to, they have that link Twitter button now. Twitter is like the official bridge to to Web three now. So I think Twitter is the most important out of all the social media platforms. But your website, your Instagram, and all that stuff is also really great. So um, I'll just start off. I'll go in. I'll read um, a little bit about symbols of love. It's like a, it looks like it's gonna be a Taj Mahal series. So Taj Mahal's uh, a symbol of love commissioned by. Uh, Magal Emperor Shan uh, Jahan in 1632 to honor his favorite wife who died while giving birth to their 14th child. Um, her name was uh, Mumtaz Mahal, which in English translates to something like chosen one of the palace. Uh, it's why the building is called Taj Mahal, reflecting her name uh, and in English translating to crown of the palace. The breathtaking uh, edifice was constructed by twenty, constructed by twenty thousand artisans, assigned by a thousand elephants over a period of 20, uh, 22 years. The design was inspired by uh, descriptions in uh, the Quran of heaven, and indeed uh, the pure white marble rising against a. Uh, 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 can you say that word for me, Serulian. Cerulean. Cerulean. I'm having a hard time today. Cerulean sky seems otherworldly. Um, thanks to its sophisticated use of optical illusions and the fact that it changes uh, colors throughout the day. Morphing from pure white to dusty pink, um, the building incorporates not only the finest principles of Mukal art and architecture, 
but also aspects of Persian, Ottoman, and Islamic traditions, making it like love itself truly universal. I love the artist statement. I think that's a great, great artist statement that like really brings me in and makes me uh, intrigued about um, the Taj Mahal. I've never been there. It makes me want to get out there and be there. There's so much uh, history behind it and so much beauty to it. And so um, we move into the pictures. Um, I mean, Yulia talked about this yesterday. There's some, there's some really beautiful shots in here that we've highlighted. Um, but I remember Yulia, um, you said, you know, one of the first things you said was like, oh, wow, this is about love and, um, you know, how you'd, you'd like to see, you know, maybe some more intimate and like detailed uh, images. And I said, you know, I, I'd like to see some more um, detailed images of actually like the, the interior of this space. So, you, so do you want to talk about that when, when traveling and, and shooting a space and um, what it's like to kind of tell the full story to create a collection? Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Mike. And uh, in, in fact, indeed, uh, in a lot of the collections that we're going to look at today um, and, and collections that I see out there in general, uh, particularly when it comes to storytelling part of it, right? How do you tell a comprehensive story visually? This is a common thread that I, uh, that I keep seeing that we need more uh, depth and breadth of different images to uh, advance the narrative of the story forward. So in this case, we have just really incredible, beautiful shots of Taj Mahal. I'm liking that breadth and depth of images from different uh, vantage points, from different perspectives, from inside of the Taj Mahal, Taj Mahal like you mentioned. And, I, and I've visited the Taj Mahal, and I was very lucky to do so. And it's an incredible building. And inside of it, the interior is so beautiful. And the the ruler, uh, Shah Jahan, he, he paid incredible uh, tribute to his wife. And... It, you know, we, we want to see that. We want to see that love that because this collection is called Symbols of Love. So we want to see that love reflected um, in the interiors. So that that would be my, my main feedback for this artist. Uh, for example, two shots, Dusk of Love and A Wish to Love, both stunning shots, but they're also both quite similar in the way they're executed. And so to me, I would perhaps choose one of them and then use the space to um, add more depth to the story with the interiors, with some close-up shots of the building, with some beautiful details, the incredibly intricate floral, by the way, details of the interior. Uh, and I think that would make this collection just so much, uh, so much stronger visually as well. Totally. Um, yeah, completely agree with that too. Um, I think a lot of times when you look at um, storytelling and documentary stories, there's a lot of different perspectives. There's a lot of, uh, you know, photographs of like what happens beforehand and what happens after. And so a lot of those are in the, um, the ones that, you know, based on humans, human emotion and stuff. Like that. And this is a little bit different, but I think that, um, you know, you can still tell that sort of story by going inside the Taj Mahal and sort of... Um, photographing like those intricate details and filling up some of these spaces where, you know, you have, so every picture in this is actually an exterior photograph of the Taj Mahal, even this one, even though it's framed within an interior, it's, in, it's still outside of the Taj Mahal. And so um, you do a great job. Obviously this is a, a really good photographer that understands some symmetry and lighting and, and color and everything like that as well. Just, um, would touch on that point that you said of uh, advancing that story by getting a little bit closer to those uh, intimate details. And so outside of that, I really don't have anything else. I think it's the, the photos are beautiful. The price is really good. And um, let's look at the descriptions. Um, actually, I was going to say that's the one thing that I would I would want the artist to work on, the descriptions, because, um, and I think you mentioned that as well, that uh, I'd love to learn a little bit more about the artist themselves. Uh, we don't have it in the collection description and we also don't have it in the each individual. Um, yes. Oh, actually, no, sorry, I'm wrong because some, some of them they them, might. Some of them they mm -hmm. might. Which one? So, for example, Haze of Love that has uh, 
a, a few of paragraphs work. on the image, but it doesn't have information about the artist. Yeah, so we're missing some vital information here, which would be like, you know, in the description, the name of the collection, the name of the artist, and the edition, right? So as a collector, we want to know that if we're buying this, that it's actually a one of one or five or one of ten or whatever you, um, you know, whatever you expect it to be. I expect these to be probably uh, one of ones, but, you know, we, you know, this isn't the digital receipt for us, right? Like the properties and the description. As a collector, it's sort of like the digital receipt. So it's a plain flag by my house. Um, th there's a uh, look close there. There's a, it's like a digital receipt to know because once you sell this, story, um, you can't go back anymore and edit this. You can't go back and you edit your property. So um, properties, um, we've been harping on a lot lately that they're very easy to do. They show up under here when you're on OpenSea and you can just give them add property and it's just it's a title and then description and you can put, you know, for a title, you could put, um, you know, addition, then the description, you could put um, one of one. And you can go so on about any type of details that you want about the, uh, the photograph. So um, definitely need to have that uh, information in there. That's like kind of one of the prerequisites for even applying to the AMA, but we do like to um, use some of them as an example as, as of what needs to be done. But uh, I really like how the, the artist, you know, uh, has different names, haze of love, symbol of love, fly away, and perfection. I like that better than when artists put, they just number the images. Where they put the original symbol as love title and put symbols on two, three, four, six, seven. Yeah. But outside of that, um, I think that's, you know, that's all I really, really had on taking this collection. Um, just one small comment from me. I agree with everything you said, Mike. Um, uh, for the images that have uh, sort of more full description, um, I would love to see two, one to two sentences on the artist itself. So that we have the artist's name, but beyond that, it's a mystery of who this person is. And I think a lot of us want to know that. Um, a lot of us want to connect with the, with the artist uh, on the human level. And so I think that would, that would be amazing to have one to two sentences uh, about the artist there as well. A great point. Um, yeah, great point. Otherwise, um, everything else looks pretty good. I, I would probably um, separate symbols of love and not have it as just one word here. You know, symbol space of space love. Um, price point looks good. Yeah, outside of that, I think we can move on to the next collection. I think that should be very helpful for the artist. Right. Cool. So next collection is uh, Master Hands, and this is by Hassan uh, Ukar. And so it's eight items, uh, no no owners yet, full price of a, a 0 0.15, which is very fair for one of ones. So master hands, uh, uh, there are moments in the journey of life uh, that are worth immortalizing. And this collection, uh, which is preserved to you as sections from life, is primarily intended to emphasize labor and effort. In this context, the most precious treasures of every craftsman and worker uh, working all over Turkey uh, were immortalized. All the uh, effort given was crowned with the uh, right light and combined in a, a triangle of labor, uh, human and life. In addition, each photograph is presented uh, to you by trying to create a visual feast uh, with its unique story and aesthetic um, perspectives. Um, so then the next sentence is, if the person who bought the photo contacts me, um, I can send a higher size uh, via email. I don't know what these symbols are after this. You could probably delete that. Um, but there might be a better way of doing this. Like there's a section for unlockables, and then you can add the um, you can add the higher resolution image within the unlockables. Or I mean, I, what I've been doing in my last collection is just I've been just taking the highest resolution possible and putting the highest uh, DPI or pixels per inch possible. And um, OpenSea has no problem with me uploading that file, and so then you don't have to do any of that. Um, so each photo is a single, um, yeah, you know, I'd probably call that, you know, each photo is limited to one or is it one of one. I would change language a little bit on that. I'm a textile photographer living in uh, Izmir, Turkey. Uh, and at the same time, I shoot documentary people, uh, oriented photos. I have awards in many national and international photography competitions. I have been in many photography competition organizations and jury seats. 
So that's cool. Um, if you're gonna list the awards and stuff, I, I always recommend listing them at the end. I think your story is more important than the awards. So I think good job on that. And then uh, artists left their name at the bottom. That's good. I was saying today, like um, we want to know your name. So um, one problem I see here though, is like, if you look over here, all, we, all I have is a watch list, but I have no links. So you can have your link to your Twitter, your Instagram, your, your medium, your anything that you have that, you know, cause artists might, I mean, sorry, collectors might, or collectors or artists might connect to some of these images, but they, they might want to know a little bit more about you. And then, so now you're giving them an extra step. They got to copy and paste your name, go on Google, pick, paste it in. Hopefully there's not other, uh, Usar, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, Usan, uh, cars out there and then sort through that and try to figure out who you are when you can just literally link your Twitter on here and, and link some of those other things, which I find to be really important. Um, and so, you know, as we go down and we look into the work without even opening up any of these, you know, me, me and Yulia both saw these yesterday and we were like, oh, wow, wow, these are great. Some really interesting perspectives and compositions within this and um, emotion and such. And so, um, I know you pointed out one. I'll open up one that you pointed out. <laughs> My favorite, yes. Yeah, Mosque Realm Master, if you want to talk about that one. I just love that image and in the whole collection it's uh, it immediately stood out to me. I love the perspective uh, that the artist decided to take here. I love the depth of field, uh, uh, a bit more subtle depth of field, but still it gives us that impression of richness in the photograph. I love the light. I love the the black uh, background behind the art, uh, behind the craftsman and I just think it's an excellent image with also the way that he used the, the artist used perspective to create a sense of flow in the image with the um, half moons you know the way they're sort of shaped in this uh, or that they aligned in this wave in the image I just love that I think it flows for me really really excellent work and yeah. I'm I'm also partial to uh, work that portrays craftsmen and women around the world. This is something that I love uh, in my work as well. So this collection stood out to me immediately. I think it's so important to preserve uh, what people do with their hands, the crafts, uh, the mastery of their work. And I think this collection does that in an excellent way. Yeah, I think um, I think what else is beautiful in this image for me too, outside of all what you've said is like, just the use of color relationships too. I yes. think like the, I think the hunter green goes really well with the gold. It's almost like he has gold stripes on his shirt, the yellow with the gold. It all sort of ties in, and you know, his glasses are just peering down onto his nose. He's deep into his work. It's really beautiful. <clears throat> and so I was, yeah, I was looking at this one before. Um, there's a lot of these that I really, really enjoy. Um, this bread, ba uh, bread baker. Gorgeous photograph of uh, I love how you I love how the, the artist framed each window within a window and shows the different types of breads and then you know the man's just here and you know he's he's working on it half window open really love that uh, really love that shot very much mm -hmm. right. some beautiful lighting the oh, let me put this from oldest because they do just jump around if you don't have it in oldest and. All this is, uh, for the most part, what the artist wanted you to see it in, because that means that they minted this first, second, third, fourth, and so on. So I think there was some really beautiful light within this uh, chickpea warehouse. Some gorgeous light coming in, and uh, women working with the chickpeas, and the colors are gorgeous, and all the fine little details in each. Uh, it's a lot of chickpeas. I've never seen that many. I love chickpeas. <laughs> but it's really pretty. And all the bags and the... And the um, Bags of probably more chickpeas in the background. They uh, they have no shortage, but um, beautiful photograph. I um, love that one too. I also love the Pottery Master. Pottery Master, yeah. Let me grab that one. Mm -hmm. I love that you can see this craftsman's hands uh, close up. Uh, mm -hmm. The collection is called Master Hands, and you can see these hands creating this work, and you can see the dedication of the craftsman, his emotion, his focus and attention uh, to this piece. It's almost like the artist has 
uh, captured an, uh, another artist in flow while creating his his uh, his art, and it's really beautiful. I also love how he positioned um, his subject um, and created some space behind where we see so many. Uh, what are these vessels? I guess clay vessels that are still that still need to be uh, finished, which kind of also tells you about again the dedication to your craft. How many more vessels this this craftsman needs to finish? Uh, it's, you know, in this lifetime of, of work, I I, I love this um, story that us as viewers were also assigning to this image, right? When we when we pay attention, when we take the time to evaluate it. Uh, and I think it's a really strong piece of storytelling as well. Yeah, I think um, I think being um, making successful documentary environmental portraits is actually some of the hardest things to do because you know a lot of a lot of people might take this shot you know just right here, just the portrait shot, right? But like not paying attention as much to like all these vessels that you're talking about back here that are um, that show the dedication that there's still so much more work to uh, to actually be done. So really successful work on um, showing an environmental uh, portrait. You know, let's take a look at the spot boundary work. Pretty too. Looks like it's raining just sparks. And um, I like how the sparks they don't they don't cover his they don't cover his face. This perfect positioning and these blue lights between the gold. It's a great color contrast. And you can see the depths and dimension of the space and this this hot, you know, hot, hot lava liquid just going in. Seems like a really, really cool and interesting, uh, interesting and, and, and hard, hard labor. Yeah. Beautiful. And this collection have... is also, oh, sorry. Go <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to comment that this collection also is a great example of uh, tying your story together, not just by subject matter, but visually as well. Uh, so all of the images are sort of in those uh, deeper, darker tones executed in, in that way, and, and they all tie very well together visually. Um, so the artist did an excellent job of that. They do, and, and we have a lot of information in the description. The only thing is I'm getting uh, some of these symbols after the description. Are you seeing these symbols that are unreadable, to me at least? Um, I'm not actually, no, I'm not seeing those. Let me check, let me double check. No, I'm not getting any symbols. Um, I can like, okay, so, so after like description and then after artist, um, there's not like this symbol. I don't know. From, on mine, I, I get a symbol that's unreadable for me. It's strange. But if you don't get it, then that's then that's good. But other than that, then um, it's a really well done, really really well done collection. Uh, I love the name, the artist statement, really good, and the photos um, speak for themselves. They're really great. We have all the information. Um, we haven't sold any yet, so I would consider, you know, maybe adding some properties like, um, you know, uh, artist name, addition, dimension, DPI, you know, some of the stuff that the collectors really want to see is the properties of be becoming the, uh, the metadata of the blockchain. So, yeah, outside of that, really great work. I'd love to move on to the next collection. Great. Cool. All right, so the next collection is uh, called uh, The Magic Seagulls, and this is by uh, Yamuna, oh no, this is, uh, no, no, that's where it's, where it's taken, Yamuna Gott, but the actual artist's name is uh, uh, Aaron uh, Kumar uh, Nalimela. Uh, Aaron Kumar <laughs> Nalimela. <laughs> I think I got it, yeah, I think I got it. You so, got it, you got it. Let's take a read at it first. So the, the Gott is, um, a spectacular sight where hundreds of seagulls gather to feed at dawn. A breathtaking scene is created when the reflections of the birds on the still water are combined with the colors of the sunrise. Interesting, because they shot, shot it in black and white. Despite the fact that a lot of the people visit here, it's become a place for a bunch of photographers. In order to capture them uniquely, I chose to make them monochrome. 
um, to add a 3D view of the pictures, I made mean, sort of composed in, a, in such a way to involve layers, such as foreground, midground, and background. I visited the place on three consecutive mornings to capture the fog and sunrise. On the first day, I was very excited and saw only a few birds, but I felt amazing at the first sight. I was blown away um, by the second day. The birds gathered around us, the sounds, the scenery, everything was incredible. This feeling is like opening up uh, to another world, and you have to uh, feel it firsthand. I tried to capture this surreal experience with my camera. Third day, not so great, uh, as there were only a few birds, but all in all, the experience felt like a lifetime. Um, uh, though it is a, a sacred body of water on the uh, Indian subcontinent, the uh, Yumana River, uh, is also among the dirtiest rivers in the world. Although the refuge, uh, refuge, although this refuge appears beautiful on the outside, beneath its surface lies an unfathomable amount of sewage. The collection consists of ten one of ones. Okay, so um, let's take a look. So, um, if I just look at the collection just overall like this. Something I, I notice is that there's a repeating pattern here. So the second image, um, light of the sun, the fourth image, the fifth image are quite too similar in a sense that we just have birds that are sort of flocking everywhere. And I think the most um, successful one would be uh, the magic here, as we do have this shine on the water which is beautiful, but we also have this clear subject sort of, which is the boat and all the boat birds around them and in the water. And so out of those three, would you, would you agree with that, Julia, that that would probably be the most successful of those? I agree. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so then we have image number three. This is beautiful and a much more minimal image. You will see a woman out on a boat with her hands out to the sides and the birds sort of mimicking with the wings, the woman's hands, and you can see a moon and it's foggy and there's a lot of atmosphere. Let's go back to the, um, the view of everything together too. So uh, if we were to remove these two, then we would have this image, this image, this image, then we would go into, you know, then there's search, search for food, which is a different look, um, a different look at, let's see if we can see this in white. We'll put it in, and white and make it big. No, it goes black. So I, I find this one to be uh, be beautiful. I go. I love the contrast in it. Number seven is quite interesting. Number eight, I think uh, we both felt that the composition was a, a very strange composition that didn't feel um, feel right for uh, for for the image to be successful as the bird is sort of just coming just inside the frame and there's just so much negative space and, and not a lot of room for storytelling. How did you feel about the composition and, and that on this, Julia? Um, yes, I agree. Not, not much more to add here. I mean, if, if, if just a couple of seconds later when the bird is closer to the center perhaps of the frame or maybe on the one third, uh, I, I feel it would be a much more successful image. Okay. Cool. So let's look a few more. So you talked about this image and, and how you liked how it sort of had this play between the birds and the water and the sky. You want to talk on that? Yes, I did. I remember we had a conversation about it a little bit. Um, I loved this image um, and I still can't remember the term in English to describe what I'm trying to say, but I love the juxtaposition of the black birds uh, or like black silhouettes of birds sitting on the water and uh, the open space of, of the sky. There is something here that works for me. The balance of this works for me. The only thing I would do differently here is probably just crop it a bit differently, crop it a bit closer uh, to, to make it a bit more balanced. But overall, I love this image. Yeah. And then we end on, we end on an image um, that we both sort of felt didn't really feel like it fit into the collection. Maybe that's because there's really no other up close human element that's within the collection here. The composition also feels a bit strange where he's he's sort of landed because he's rowing in the direction of of you know west. 
but his uh, his comp- he's composed in in the, the you know the, the the most west side of the frame, and I, usually it's if it's nice to have open you know there's no rules, but usually it's nice to have um, more negative space in the area in which he's growing. But outside of that, it felt like a bit like it didn't fit within the overall scope of the entire collection. Nope. Agree. I completely agree. I think this is the other thing that I also see is that um, a lot of times we tend to uh, err on the side of more versus less. Um, and it's hard, right? As as artists, we wanna we wanna put our work out there, but sometimes that's why it helps so much. And I know a lot of people in the community do do that as well. Is before you uh, launch the collection out, consult some friends, right? Let let a few artists, other artists, uh, uh, see your work because sometimes our friends see something that we don't see. We're so t- we're so close to these images, you know. It's it's our uh flesh and blood so to speak and it's so helpful to hear a perspective of somebody who's not as attached to the images because 99 percent of the time it's going to make the collection that much stronger um which is the case here I, I think like you said if we sort of perhaps call number four and five because they're quite similar to number three um and uh, number 10 which sort of doesn't fit uh, subject matter wise um uh it could be a, a much much stronger collection yeah and then called called the one here with the awkward composition i mean if we did that right so we would have we'd be call, we'd be calling one i'm sorry we'd be calling one two um three four images right and so mm-hmm. instead of a 10 You'd have a, a collection of six, which is which is not bad. If you could tell the story with six and sell out quicker with six, why not? You know. And so I agree with you that like I always like to have a, a second set, a third set, sometimes a fourth set of eyes on my you know project. So my next release for my Lost in Transit series, twenty images. I you know I showed it to eight different people. And said, you know, what do you think about this? And one of them came back and said, you know, I don't, I don't feel like this uh, first image fits with the rest. And so I said, okay, well, I got something to swap that out with, and I swapped it out. And then, um, then it actually felt perfect, even to me when I looked at it. I said, okay, wow, that did a lot, that changed a lot. And so, totally agree to your point of um, having other friends uh, take a look at our uh, at our collection and. Um, you know, and, 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 and lend an eye, you know, because we get clouded in our own work. We love all of our own work, but it doesn't always mean that it fits the story, right? But really nice with Zoika, like right here we have, you know, clearly Facebook and um, Twitter and what's this one, Telegram and website and all that information, artist name, all the stuff that I really want to see be people um, getting into the habit of putting on OpenSea because if I can't find you as a, as a collector, then uh, and I can't do any research about you or see what you've come from or what you've done, I might move on into something else, even if I like the art. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I agree. I think it's presented uh, so uh, so well. Um, I, I think for me, just one comment, which was similar to one of the other collections we looked at. Uh, we have the artist name, but I would love. One to two sentences about who the artist is as well. Do you know which collection is that the symbol? Um, sorry, Mike, you cut out. Oh, I was wondering what if, if that was a specific collection. I mean, if, you don't have to say a specific one. A lot of the ones do need that extra mm-hmm. touch of like who people are as a photographer. So, it was um, the this- one that we just looked at. I think a couple of collections ago. <laughs> Oh, Master Hands? I think one before that, actually. Oh, the, the first one, Symbols of Love. Yes, we didn't have any information about the actual photographer, just about the history of um, Taj Mahal. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's a really good point. And so the next collection is um, is interesting because this is a collection that's tied up between half video and half portraits. It's called uh, um, uh, Orientalist Folk. And this uh, collection is by uh, uh, 
Artinger. That's the only name that I can think of was Artinger. So description is um this collection uh will be this collection will be about folk dance reflecting the cultural values of the society to which it belongs in all civilizations of the world for centuries we present folklore which is a combination of local dance local dress and ethnic music to your liking in the world of NFT uh, shooting will be done in 36 different regions in 12 different countries that's that's a yeah, that's a huge project. There'll be six videos and six photos for each. I wonder if they're talking in past tense because there's actually six videos and six photos in each of this. So I'm wondering if if they've already accomplished that. And so, um, I think I think this is the first because uh, because it's all shot in the same region in Turkey. So I think the this is the first uh, I guess phase of the project, and then the next one will be the next country. It's yeah, let me read. Let me read that again too. So instead, hold on, hold on. so it, they'll be in different collections, I guess. Um, shooting will be done in thirty-six different regions in twelve different countries. Oh, so six videos and six photos for each country. Um, so this is this is only one of twelve countries. So you're right. Mm -hmm. um, my question for this artist was how to um well i guess he I, I guess the artist is doing that through names of the nfts themselves because if you if you look at each of the names it says orientalist folk turkey okay. say, mm -hmm. um i i thought i thought in my mind you know it, it when we were discussing this with you yesterday it's such an ambitious project right there's going to be uh, 11 more destinations in this project and at some point it can get a bit I guess what's the word um, uh, crowded I guess so how do you sort of I, it, it would be amazing to see them by country somehow right so here's everything from Turkey here's everything from all these other countries that that they're going to be shooting in um, I wonder how they're going to accomplish that but I, I well, think right now they're doing that through names of the NFTs I mean you know, my idea would, would be to not in the description limit, like not in the description say that there's going to be six videos and six photos from each one, but instead that there is going to be a variety of photos and videos from each one. Because what if six, what if all six photos aren't successful in Turkey? What if six videos aren't all successful in Turkey? And then maybe there's just two of you that really hit. So I don't, I don't think that's a good idea to say, put a number out about how much good art you're going to create. I mean, I never do that. That's like, um, then I'm, then I'm going to be trying to just make art to meet a number. So I would start off just by saying, I'm going to do 12 different countries and bring back, you know, the best of what I, the best or, you know, what, what resonated most of what I've found or something. So instead of sending six, but anyway, let's look at um some of the work. So we'll start. Let's start with portraits first. So I think some of the portraits are really, really beautiful and strong. I think that's a great, 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 beautiful black and white strong portrait of um this of this girl. She's I love the expression. She's looking out. Seems very strong. And then the um you see the, uh, the wardrobe. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. And and again, I'm drawn to work like this, which documents uh, cultures, which documents costumes and traditions around the world. So I was very excited that uh, that we decided to um, pull this one in for our discussion today. I like how they took a different approach to the style and they're not all close up and waste it on. And I like this little moment here. I agree. It, it's uh, it feels intimate uh, in some way that 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 we're catching this person in in a very intimate moment. He's holding a gun, by the way. I just realized. That yes, yes, he is. <laughs> he's holding a gun, and um, it, this image feels um, nostalgic to me. It feels like it's from a different era somehow. It does, um, and I love. 
I, and I love that the artist decided to do a black and white treatment uh, for the portraits. for the portraits. Mm -hmm. Although not all. Wait, are actually no? Yes, all of them are black and white, and then the the videos just stand out that much more in that treatment. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting way to do it. It's an interesting way to do it. I like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen that many collections that incorporate videos and uh, images together in the same collection in this way. I, I think this is uh, it's a great example of how to do that. Yeah, another beautiful shot. Close. Yeah. Oh, I like the full body on this one. It's gorgeous. The depth of field as well. Yeah, great depth of field. So let's take a look at some of the videos. I think this was one of the most successful ones for me, actually, this one here. Um, and actually, they, they actually priced it higher. Wait, did they know all the videos of uh, 0 0.50? But let's open up this one. I don't know how it's going to work with sound. I have headphones on, but I'll turn the sound on. I don't know what that's going to do for you guys. Okay, we can't hear it. Okay, so I think that one's really fantastic. I love he, how he ends with his hands out of them. And also the close-up of the face, the close-up of the wardrobe. This video was really well done. I like that. I agree. And uh, if anyone has any more moments uh, to come in and uh, uh, turn on the sound and just listen to the sound in that video, it's really nice as well. Yeah. Let's, let's listen to it now. So, you know, just from my own, you know, opinion, that one wasn't as strong as the last. And I, I don't know if it's because, um, you know, the subject maybe doesn't feel as confident um, on being videoed or if, it, if a lot of the dance kind of sort of just felt the same. But there was just something, um, there's just something that connected with me a bit more on the last one. That's it might mm -hmm. just be me. No, I agree. Um, I felt the same way too. Um, I think slowing down a bit of her movement in the, in the slow motion would, would have been beautiful. There are some moments in this video that are just excellent, like uh, the close up, the, the shot at the beginning, the this this close up right here. Yeah. When she's smiling, when she's laughing. You know, there are some very endearing moments in this video. But I agree. Overall, it felt a bit more disconnected than the than the first video. Yeah, felt very connected. The first one. Let's see. One more. Um. Sorry, yes. This is where I would want some slow motion, a bit of slow motion movements, I feel like. That one worked a little better for me. I, I think it had something to do with her energy. 
but I don't know. It's something to do with her energy within the video, and I like the close up on the, the the dress and the feet, and it just felt I don't know. I felt a little more connected. I agree. I think just overall, though, this collection um, is a great example of also documenting these um, traditions and these dances for the future. You know, I in, in a lot of my work, um, I, do, I do work documenting traditions that are disappearing around the world. And I just love the idea of NFTs. Uh, immortalizing that uh, in the metaverse because that's just such an like where else would we when or where else would we be able to spend time we're spending right now looking at uh, these traditional dances from Turkey you know it's just so amazing that we get to do this absolutely so yeah I really I really enjoy the collection and I love the um, I love the idea of pushing boundaries and doing doing video NFTs and mixing it with photo nfts that are actually black and white it actually works in the same series and so yeah. i really i really enjoy this probably you know probably just need some more eyes on it um prices seem very reasonable for um for a uh, uh, foundation obviously do take a lot of fees and stuff so i do like this collection for sure do you have anything else on it um, I agree with what you said, and I'm just I'm excited to see what this artist uh, produces for the other locations as well. Yeah, me too. For sure. So next collection that we have is uh, it's called Tobacco Farmers, and that's by uh, uh, Ofu uh, Terpkan. And so I'll read a little bit about it here. So production of tobacco is a demanding process that requires uh, delicate care over a six month period. In this collection, I will not tell you how tobacco is produced and what stages it goes through. Every photo frame you look at, you will witness the individual life stories of tobacco production, and you will see the connection between tobacco and farmers by life. By getting, by getting this collection, you will buy a story, not a photo. In this collection, I share tobacco farmers themed photos I took in different parts of Anatolia between 2016 and 2021, a five-year project. Um, one of one edition, high-resolution JPEGs. Then a little bit about the artist. Um, uh, artist the artist is an award-winning photographer based in Turkey. Uh, he likes to be part of life and eternalize uh, th those moments. His photographs reflect the relation between labor and human. Cool. So I've sorted it by the oldest. That's how he should have minted it. And then we'll go on and we'll take take a look at some of these. And I favored some of these that had some really, really interesting um better compositions. So, mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. This one kind of just jumps out to me all for this. See? a little slow on open sea can you hear me uh yes you you disappear for a second but you're back now yeah it's open is going a little slow for me to open the images i love number 11 uh, which is the one that you were looking at i think trying to open that one I'm trying to open 10, but I like 11 too. Let's try to open 11 since 10 doesn't open. Really, really nice price on one of ones too, 0 0.1. Really attractive pricing. And a mix of a lot of different moments. I swear, open seas broke like two or three times a day. <laughs> if you have any luck um opening yours let me know if you do um i'm able to open mine yes so then maybe um do you know how to do the share screen maybe i'll turn off and you share can you share screen you have them all all the projects up here okay sounds good let's do that okay, uh, okay. So i stopped streaming um
Yeah. You should have, um... Oh, yeah, I, I can watch your stream. Can you see it? I can. Okay, perfect. All right, you're the yes. host. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so let's sort this. So yes, yeah, so um, I think for me, this collection was another example of this, this uh, propensity of artists to put more rather than less into the collections. And I think if we like this collection has some very strong images. And then if we remove some images that are perhaps not as strong, then this only makes this collection even stronger. Right. And the case in point here, for example, the first, um, or rather the image that the artist uh, minted last, this one to me was an example of an image that wasn't as strong as some of the other ones. He has, or this artist has some really great um, portraits of people looking directly into the camera. And this image that just doesn't quite hit in the same way for me. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, if we look at right number 11, very strong image. Mm -hmm. um, really great use of color um, and the background here, or, or the scene rather. I guess these are like the, the actual tobacco leaves in, in nets. Sounds like that's how they store them or something. Let's see what he says in the collection. Under the tobacco nets were shadows. My mom wouldn't let me go out there. Don't go into the field, she always told me. She would save up little and gave it to me to buy books. I used to read books until the evening in the shade of the nets. My mother would... Uh, oh, Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why my Siri pop up, popped up in the middle of it. Uh, I used to read books until the evening in the shade of the nets. My mom would come to me during breaks and just watch me. She would show her chopped hands by saying, you will read my daughter. Look, tobacco is burning. Let your hand hold a pencil, not a tobacco leaf. Wow. Um, it's a great story, although I'm not exactly sure if this is the story that the, the story about the photographer themselves or about the, the girl um, in the... Oh, I guess it is about the girl because it says my daughter. Okay, um, so yes, yeah, so this image, for example, uh, number 12 as well. And you wanted to talk about number 10, Mike, so I'll open that one. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I like I, I liked the, um, the perspective from this. It seems like they're underneath, and I like how with, they caught both reactions of this, like, really joyful uh, time during work. And it's also just strangely like abstract like with the green and the blue um shape that it's created i, I think it's an interesting perspective that i've seen much uh, done much so i, I like mm -hmm. i agree yes it's a it's a quite unique perspective and uh this is what also advances that uh storytelling narrative forward right like what we talked about earlier so with, yeah. with the case of a Taj Mahal collection where sort of the perspective was always uh, about the same here we are shown this process of growing tobacco from very different sides right we're looking at uh, what watering the the plants we're looking at collecting the plants we're looking at you know uh, actually uh, preparing the fields for harvest probably or for for planting so we get such a breadth of perspectives here and of subject matter that drives that narrative forward although here is another example again of you know for example image number 11 that we just looked at right great strong image and then i see that there is another image very similar to it yes um, and I don't, and I don't know that this one is as strong. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I, I like the sort of the, the expression on this girl's face and her very piercing eyes. Um, but I think this, you know, this this sort of makes it more difficult for a collector to then also choose, right? And there's this this image as well, which is sort of a similar situation as well happening where a, a, yeah. a woman. Is, uh, um, in these nets. So I think this is just a recurring theme that we have to keep talking about that uh, 
it's it makes our collection much stronger when we first don't uh, add images that are similar into the same collection. We always think about showing different perspectives and always keeping in our minds that uh, when it comes to telling these stories, sometimes less less is really more. Yeah. And so there's a few of those too, right? With the um, uh, like number nineteen, number fifteen, and number sixteen, where it's it's got let's scroll up a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. You know, in, inside there with the uh, with the plastic netting, and so like, you know, maybe choosing two of those instead of three. Exactly, and and I think we uh, we sort of come at it from a perspective of well, let's give collectors more choice, right? Let's give them, let's show them a few different ways. No, that no, no, no. That we, do. <laughs> we don't want to do that exactly. No, don't, don't, don't give them more choice. <laughs> just like, uh, just like on a food menu, when they give me too many options on the food menu, I'm just, I'm, but if, if there's 10 options and they're all great options, then um, I'm ordering food. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, the description, the description seems, um, description seems good. There is the artist's name, there is a collection, one-on-one -on -one location, all of the things that we um, always talk about. Although again, here, I, I would just want to know just a little bit more about the artist, right? One to two sentences of, of the person uh, who is creating this work. Three. Great. Anything else that we wanted to uh, add about this collection? No, I think the I think the I think the photographer is a really good photographer. They understand perspectives. Um, they can get to close to their subjects and form relationships with them. Um, yeah, it's just about it's just about culling down the photos that seem sort of repetitive, giving the collector less options between the photos that seem the same. Because there's a lot of really great ones that, you know, I mean, let's see, how many how many are in this collection? 20? Mm -hmm. It's 20 images. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this collection could be could be like a super strong 12 images. Yes. And, you know, and, and like sell out the 12, right? But continue to work on this. And then, you know, you could maybe add more images to this collection as time goes on, as you fill in like new um new perspectives and you know new storytelling rather than having um similar images that sort of tell the self tell the same story and and just keeping the collections sold out that way i agree mm -hmm. cool right um do you want to try uh, uh, to see if your open sea works now or do you want me to uh, let me let me try first and see if my open seas work um, before I before I switch and and take over. Okay. No, it doesn't. It just goes really slow with the blue line. But the next one is um is is the ice road, and I I, I have the artist names, so I can give the artist names on you. Um, I, I I have them all pulled up in order as well. So uh, let me see here. Uh, Open Sea just said, Mike, you're you're on here too much because you're doing all these AMAs. I know, so. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, do you want to try again, or do you want me to try? Um. Oh, I thought you said you don't. It's not pulling up for you. It's not pulling up for me now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can you see the screen? Um, yours? Mm, no, 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 no. I think you got to share your screen again. Okay. How about now? Yeah. Mm, nope. You have to. Yeah, you got to click that. You gotta click that screen button and press share your screen. Oh, you did it before. I did, I, and I did just now, and it's not working. <laughs> oh, so strange. Okay, um, let's try it again. Well, Can you see? No, so when you click share your screen, try to go to the second tab. There's two tabs. There's like a first tab with two screens, and then there's a second tab. Try the second tab screen. 
Okay. All right. Now, now, now it works. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, so this okay. is the ice road, and it's by uh, Gamzi uh, uh, Donmez. And I can yes. get a description if you want. So uh, fishing is easy in summer, but when the lake freezes in winter, another struggle begins in uh, Beishia Lake. The nets are thrown at the beginning of winter, and when the lake freezes, uh, they come several times a week, and the nets are, dr are drawn. Fishermen have to go to the lake by breaking the ice to make a living. Every time the lake freezes, the f all fishermen break the ice with teamwork and move the boat. A Bay Share Lake, Turkey, 2017 to 2022. So, five year project. Yes. Um, so before we go to the to the images themselves, I think the same comment that you you've already mentioned, Mike, in prior collections that uh, we we have um, we have the story, right? So we understand what the ice road story will be about. But I would love to know more about the artists themselves, the name of the yeah. artist. So yeah, the artist, the artist, artist name is not in here, and none of their links are linked to OpenSea. Mm -hmm. So there's Except an Insta for Instagram. Yeah, there's an Instagram link, but I think most of these artists are actually on Discord. So why not have a Discord link? Um, mm -hmm. Most of them are on Twitter. That's a more important link than than, than um, Instagram now. If you want your NFTs collected by people that are interested. And so I think a lot of people are really missing this mark with adding their, their links to, uh, to OpenSea and being discoverable. I agree. Absolutely. So then we move into the uh, collection uh, itself, and it's a collection of, I'm going to do that trick that you taught me, so sorted by all this, so we see it in the way the artist uh, created these images. Mm -hmm. And... It's a collection of six images, and we have some really interesting perspectives here. Uh, for example, the hard way. So it sounds like it looks like it, this was a drone shot. Yeah. That describes the process of uh, creating that ice road on the lake, and some really nice use of space here with lots of open, open space, and the action here in the middle. Um, really nice shot here. I'm not connected, so I need to, <laughs> I need to log in. Um, but what you and I discussed, Mike, right, uh, last night as well, that it's, it's another example how uh, we have three images here that are similar in perspective. So they're sort of capturing the same process, uh, the hard way, be strong and breaking eyes. And then we also have two images that are, um, again, sort yeah. of similar perspective here with the mission planning and mission started. And then one yeah, image. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I say, yeah. You know what I want to see is like, I want to see like a, I want to see like a fish up close being pulled out of the water. You know, I want to yes. see like a, I want to see like, I want to see like uh, a man with a chisel breaking the ice up close. I want to see a portrait of someone. There's so many elements to this as a documentary story that are sort of missing to me. If we look, if we, if, you know, if, if, if someone showed this as the trailer to a movie, you just really wouldn't get enough out of it to, 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 to maybe want to watch the, the film because we only have um, the same scene displayed sort of over and over and over again. You need multiple scenes here. And so if, if you're able to travel back, you know, Try to get some of those close-ups, get closer to the people. Try to get some macro photographs of the, of the fish's, fish in its last moments or a bucket full of food or um, them, them scaling the fish. There's so, there's so much here that I, that I want to see. Absolutely. And that's, um, that's a really great, um, um, great comment on, again, how the storytelling, how the visual storytelling uh, propels the narrative forward. And, you know, a shout out to the Meta Jungle community, the workshop that I did 
some time ago now, we actually talked about, uh, I believe it was 10 or 11 different visual elements that you want to capture. If you want to capture a comprehensive story visually, uh, when you're, let's say, on assignment or where, when you're on location, like, like this location here, this lake, uh, you want to capture landscapes, you want to capture people, you want to capture close-ups, food, uh, uh, process in the moment, right? As, as you said, somebody pulling the, the fish out of the lake, uh, the close-ups, the buckets full of fish. Um, there's just so many different elements to the story that, that we're not getting here. Uh, that would make the story that much more richer if if we if we saw them here. Mm -hmm. Anything else that we want to add? Um, hold on, I'm trying to re-pull up here. Uh, how is how? Yeah, let's take. I mean, so we got titles, right? So we got morning at the lake, mission planning, mission started. Good titles. I like the titles. The descriptions have all of the information, right? If none of them are sold, I'd, I'd consider adding adding properties now. I'm never going to not add properties now. I love the properties tab as the metadata mm -hmm. data for blockchain. The, the collectors really love it now too. Um, the artist statement uh, had some information that you thought was missing correctly um, about the artist. Yeah, so add that. Yes. The bio, right? So just one or two sentences about who this person is. We want to connect with the person behind the lens as well. So that I think would, would be a, a good addition. Price point's very low. It almost seems like the price point of an additions collection rather mm -hmm. than a one of one. Um, so they definitely priced it very low. I would think that, you know, working for five years on a project that you would not want to consider the, the price to work that low. but. I um, hope you took the information that we gave in a constructive way about um, showing more aspects of the actual documentary story and not just this, um, this sort of faraway perspective that's, that, um, that doesn't give us these close-up um, uh, details that we're, look with, that we're looking to, um, you know, to, to see. Absolutely. And I think this is an interesting also example or juxtaposition. So one of the collections we looked at earlier was Master Hands. Um, and the story in Master Hands is different from a story here, which is Ice Road. The story in Master Hands is we're looking at different craftsmen uh, uh, practicing their craft, right? So almost by definition, we need a portrait of a craftsman in, in um, in action, right? So, and that's how the storytelling advances in that collection. That each each craftsman is presented, you know, in in, in a portrait type shot. Whereas here, uh, we're looking at a specific process, right? This this fishing, uh, ice fishing on the lake. And so, when you when you have stories that are more about a one specific process, that's where those um, uh, that breadth and depth of subject matter. Uh, it becomes really important because we want to show the story from all these different angles. Um, so yeah, Absolutely. hopefully this feedback was helpful. Cool. I think they got some stuff from that for sure yeah. that they can use to um, revisit and work on. Great. Can we look at the next one? Sure. Okay. Um, can you see this now? If I, I'm not sure how this works. I could see your screen. You're on the ice road right now. Oh, okay. Because I moved to the the next one already. Ah, oh, so every time I have to stop sharing and then start sharing no, again. No, no, you you don't. <laughs> but you shouldn't have to. Um, you you should when when you when you go to share your screen, you should have the option. It's, it's applications and then there's screens. And then on the screens, you go to screen one and go live. Wow, oh, Mike, you're such more advanced uh, Discord user than I am because I just I just been doing these for a while. That's all. <laughs> and uh, apologies to everyone for all these technical difficulties we're having. Oh, this is not um, a lot. We have way more than this on other days. Don't worry. <laughs> oh really? Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, well I guess I need to reshare again because I'm already on the next one and it's not showing. Yeah, just stop sharing, okay. and then okay, now click screen, right? Okay. And then you should have, there should be a first page and there should be two screens. And then there should be the ability to go to the second page. And then there should be one screen. You want to pick the one screen on the second page. 
Gotcha. The one that says window, right? Actions. Oh, yeah. Let me see if I was to do it. it the second says it says screens. So applications is a, a feedback AMA and morning at the lake. And then you go to screens and it says screen one. And that's the one you want. You press go live. That's not what I have at all. <laughs> okay. I could try I could try to stream again too. I'm trying to share what what uh, you're saying, and it's not working. For me, the only share that works is when I do it by tab, by each individual tab, for some reason. Hmm. I could try to. I could share again and see if, I'm, if everything's working. Okay. okay. It, I have to close yours, and then I'll share mine, um, and then go live, and then you guys should be able to see this. And wow, well, very cool. Um, you guys can see this Lux. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so the next collection we're working on is Lux, and this is by uh, Harant. Um, uh, Chach, uh, oof, very difficult to say this last name. Um, Chatrian, Harant, Chatrian. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so uh, about this collection, um, on a cold winter day nearly 30 years ago, uh, a nine magnitude earthquake quake destroyed cities and small vi vi uh, villages in Armenia. Uh, in between the half-destroyed buildings, there still stands the oldest barber shop of uh, Garumi, uh, called, named Lux. A salon uh, was first opened. The salon was first opened in 1941 and has not closed its doors neither during World War II nor today. This wouldn't be possible without barbers and their dedication to the work they do. Uh, coming to the salon every day, no matter what and working so hard to pay the bills and keep their second home alive. I am obsessed with the idea of visiting and documenting their unique, unique story. The atmosphere here smacks you in the face from the moment you enter the premises. Benefits for collectors. The first collector will receive a full-size print of the NFT. When the collection sold out, I'll donate 30% of the profits from the sales of the barber shop to cover basic needs like hot water, change of broken equipment, etc. That's really awesome. Thanks. Um, cool. So, um, more than that, let's go uh, take a look at the work. First of all, the banner on the top looks really good. I love these shots. Um, beautiful. Here you tell it's going to be um, a nice storytelling uh, series. Um, so, series of 12, avail available 12. I don't think that's true because um, I thought I saw that some of these were collected before. I think two are collected. Yeah, I think so too. So I don't know what they're telling me. Maybe because my wallet's not connected. But um, yeah, let's take a look at these from this barber shop. So uh, opening shot, uh, really nice. I love the idea of the opening shot being outside the barber shop. There's some snow on the branches. Um, you can see someone getting a haircut in here. This gentleman's walking by in a coat and then it's the classic hat. Maybe he's going in the barber shop. Maybe he's walking by. It's a good opening shot. And, uh, it's an interesting shot with a mirror. He's looking at his um, at at the blow dryer. Not not my favorite in the series, I don't think. Uh, but I think it is it's definitely a good shot. It's hard for me to pull a lot of emotion from him just kind of looking at the uh, the blow dryer. I don't I don't know what exactly to get out of it. This is this is really good. Um, you can see both men uh, in the mirror. This guy's getting a, a shave, obviously. The other man. It's just getting his hair cut. It's a really interesting like, perspective. And I think you want to talk about the next one? Yes. Um, let's see. Beautiful. <laughs> I, love, I love this image uh, of this old, uh, old woman. There is a certain playfulness in it with the way she's put her uh, chin on the uh, on her hands. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a really lovely image. Grandmama. The cleaner like, of the salon. Like, what? Oh, is she the cleaner? Is that what it says in the description? Oh, cleaner of the salon. I, I didn't even read that. I thought maybe maybe she was waiting for her husband to get his hair haircut finished so he could be more handsome. <laughs> this is an interesting sort of um, still life photograph to show like the, the space of um, this specific. Well, I guess two different uh, other spaces is like, are, are like here. Well, maybe it's just one, but they've got um, you know some some spiritual pieces here. 
Um, this looks like an image from a, maybe a, a newspaper or one of those funeral pieces and stuff. But it's cool to show the um, how each barber sort of sets up their own space. I always think that's interesting when I go to the barber shop, how each of their spaces looks different. They sort of have this like little sanctuary of their own. Mm. <clears throat> it's giving you a glimpse into their lives, into their inner worlds you know, with those uh, newspaper clippings and all the things they've decided to put on the wall. I love this. I love this shot here too. This wide angle shot where we can see the what's above, where they have these sort of like peaceful scenes of an an, an, an ocean sea and a, and a and a lake with some trees, and um, you can see the old school chairs. I love how they've kept the old style chairs with their teal and red leather, and it seems like a really old school classical barber shop. I'll leave the next one for you. Yeah, I love this image. Um, oops, hold on, it's not loading for me. Oh, the internet is being cranky today. Um, I love how the uh, he put the, the man slightly to the side, it's not at the center, uh, and the man is looking off to the camera. You can see sort of all the, all the stuff, all the chaos, uh, organized chaos that's happening behind. Um, just really shows you sort of the the life of the salon which is i think the purpose of this collection right is to show the life the lived in life of the salon over the years and and you can really see it in this shot as well yeah i'll take the next one too then i like this oh no this is yours mike you love that shot (laughs) yeah i like this i do like this shot a lot too um i like the i like the close-up detail of it i i love the I love how worn the seat looks, the cracks in the seat sort of have like this show this sort of age, like the uh, wrinkles in a hand. And um, I love, I love, I love uh, around the seat too, like all the worn floor, just worn all the way through the wood to the point where, you know, you can just feel like this barbershop's just really been here for a really long time. It's a historical place. <laughs> how about this one? Do you like this shot? Yes, I really like how this artist is capturing emotion uh, in his collection and this shot and also uh, this is number nine and also number 11. Both are very strong, uh, strong ways to capture two very different emotions, right? There's lots of joy and laughter um, in number 10 and then there is sort of a tiredness and and maybe even a bit of despair. Um, Love this one. 11. Oh man, I love mm-hmm. this shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, a really strong, uh, a really strong shot. And even 12, by the way, which that's what I, that's what uh, appealed. Uh, great, great closing shot. Great, great closing shot. This person knows yes. how to open and close. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and, and I think the, what, what, what makes the shot so great is that it is hard to convey emotion in a shot like this and and this artist accomplishes that right it's i see resolution in this image i see someone being tired also but also someone who is perhaps um, feeling satisfaction from a long days of work being yeah. over now it's just an excellent excellent way to communicate all these different emotions and like you said that the, the reason that they put it as a closing shot it's it, it works really well here yeah, and all those emotions to be shown from behind too. You know, mm-hmm. it, I think it has a lot to do with the, that that left foot picked up and the uh, the hand pulling down the sleeve and his head down, like you know, a, um, the end of another another long day. While it's tough, there's you know, it's accomplished. So um, I don't have anything else to say about this collection. I, I would probably use this as like a model collection for how to put a documentary story together. Uh, obviously, the uh, people in the barbershop are very comfortable with this photographer coming in and out. The photographer has uh, everything correct from descriptions and showing emotion and showing having detailed shots to close-ups to just just everything. Fant- uh, fantastic job. Love, love this one. So I, I think that's all I've got. Agree, and and not just documentary stories, storytelling, right? Travel storytelling as well. This is how you would do a travel storytelling piece or a collection um, with yeah, all those so, things they mentioned. So good. So uh, next collection is um, I- Iranian Dream. 
Uh, this collection is by uh, 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 Suleiman uh, Tutos. And the collection consists of uh, eight photographs. Uh, in my collection, I shared the photos that I took took in the cities I visited during my trip to Iran and places that inspired and influenced uh, me. Uh, Iran, which I have been curious about for years and read many books about, impressed me from the first moment I set foot. The friendships I made uh, with the people, I still continue. Um, Iran, which opens the doors of a magical world to its visitors uh, with its deep history and culture, uh, continues to be the center of attraction of travelers and uh, with uh, many undiscovered beauties. You know, once again, an interesting artist statement. We'd love to hear a little bit more about the, the actual artist. Also, you know, no link to Twitter, um, no link to anything but Instagram. So I think we got to get past that stage and definitely provide our links. Um, if we go into the my pictures on the oldest here. Um, like you mentioned yesterday, it seems like it's sort of, um, it's only this, this, this kind of one dimensional view of actually what Iran is as a whole. Uh, so while I think there's, you know, some beautiful shots, like uh, this one really stood out to me at Towers of Silence as being a, a frame within a frame and so beautifully well done. If it lets me open it. No, can't open still. <laughs> no, might be back to you. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think that's okay. We can just, uh, we can keep going. But uh, I agree with you, Mike, that uh, th this was, we, we discussed this yesterday, right? So there is a, a bit of a mismatch here between the collection uh, statement of, of what the collection intends to be and the actual subject matter. And you can fix it in, in different ways, or you, you can address it in different ways. You could say that this is a collection of, uh, and, and there, you know, there could be a better name for it, but uh, stunning interiors of Iran, uh, which this collection just fits quite beautifully. And there are some really stunning images here. But if you're talking about a more ambitious goal of, of, of uh, telling a story of the country of Iran, um, or the Iranian dream even, I feel like the intention of the collection doesn't quite match the images themselves because the, what the images that we're seeing are what's, like you mentioned, it's the, most of them are gorgeous interior shots um, of, of some of the locations in Iran. i mute myself because my, uh, my fire alarm is going on. Let me go turn it off. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry, we had a little smoke in here from uh, from cooking. <laughs> but, no worries. That was loud. Um, cool. So. Um, let me see. I was sharing my screen. Yeah. And so I, you were saying um, that, you know, where we left off was basically that um, this is more of like an in interior sort of architectural view at some of the, uh, the spaces of Iran rather than um, a full on a full on show of the culture. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and and maybe that's what the artist intended, right? Uh, um, but then maybe just uh, talking more about this in the collection, in the collection description. Because when I when I when I think about the Iranian dream, uh, when I think about um, you know how Iran impressed this artist from the first moment I set foot, or uh, the last statement that says Iran, which opens the doors to a magical world, uh, to its visitors with deep history and culture, continues to be center of attention of travelers with many undiscovered beauties. I would love to see more of, of different subject matter here um, uh, than the interior shots. To me, that sort of doesn't open, doesn't open the subject matter fully as, yeah. as currently executed. 
So I, I agree with that completely. And so I have the ability to actually open up photos on uh, OpenSea now. And I definitely Yay. think this is a be beautiful framed in frame photograph and got some people out there in the distance. Gorgeous shot. Love the colors between the gold and blue. And this is an interesting shot of prayer um, happening in one of the, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it's a mosque. Is that how you say it? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gorgeous yeah. architect. Yeah, gorgeous architectures, colors, stained glass, and subject. And yeah. to me, it, it feels it's you know it's like um feels a bit to me like when I when I when I travel to a new space and I kind of just have my camera with me and I'm visiting you know these different sites that are historical and. I snap photos with my camera and get some pictures, maybe some beautiful pictures of the interior spaces and stuff. But it's hard to um, put that into a, a story without sort of like spending time with like the locals and um, or spending time in, in a specific area like this over and over and over for days upon days upon days and coming up with some narrative that's not just about the uh, interior structure of it. Yes, yes, Mike, this, this is it right here, what you just said. This is so important because um, in the travel photography storytelling world, as a, you know, if you want to publish a story to magazines um, or if you want to create a collection, of, a storytelling collection of NFTs, that's exactly it, right? A lot of us uh, travel and we capture uh, places we go to, but to have a, a fully fledged story uh, with different visual elements that advance the narrative of the story forward. That's um, that's yeah. that's really the goal. It takes a long time, and it takes um, uh, it takes a lot of extroversion and speaking with people you don't know, and um, having them feel a good vibe off of you, and uh, feel comfortable with the fact that you're going to be around them and photographing and them and know that if you're going to photograph them in a positive light none of this is easy and so um, but yeah it's something to keep in mind for people that are interested in a true documentary is uh is sometimes you know going into the, the those really depths of um, learning about culture and being more immersed in it and so i find i, I have to be very immersed in the culture and for quite some time before i can really start creating some compelling uh, images about the story of who they really are. If I'm even the right person to tell that story. Absolutely. I agree. You know? Cool. Well, I think everything outside of that, they have some good descriptions and they have all the information that they need within the descriptions and I think that they have enough information from what we gave them to be able to move on to uh, the next one. Sounds good. So the next collection is, um, is called uh, Cowboy. And this collection is by uh, Fezula Tunk. And, um, and so, you know, there's three images in this. And I, I think this is where uh, you and I talked about additioning. Because um, when you look at this, it doesn't actually feel as much like a collection. The, the photos are too similar to create a cohesive story. While they're beautiful, and <clears throat> I love how they're photographed, and I love silhouettes, and I love the dog, and I love everything that's going on. Support this image is if, if you take a look at the next one, it's it's not that much different from the last. And the same thing if you go to the third, it's not much different from the last. I think this might actually be the weakest of the three. But you know, in this case, you know, it, it's 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 hard to create a, a collection with all at the same time of day, all with the same type of mood. Um, all at the same focal length and distance from your subject. And so, you know, Yuli and I were talking about it. We're saying, you know, we're in a long editions market right now where people are doing really well with editions. So, you know, maybe you don't need a collection for this actual three right here. Maybe there's a best of the three. And, you know, for me, maybe the, maybe this is the best of the three. I'm not sure. Uh, but that's a beautiful one, right? Um, it's listed the lowest, though. The most expensive one, I think, is actually the weakest one for me. I don't, I don't know how you feel about your order of, of, uh, of you know, which one you think is, is most powerful to the, to the least. I, I uh, agree with you. I think for me, the, the first two images, uh, they're kind of strong contenders with each other. I love the second image. I love the juxtaposition of the man on the horse against all the horses, you know, that, that mm -hmm. he's managing. 
Um, I love the juxtaposition. I think both of those are really strong images. Um, I, I would say that just in general, you know, because this is a storytelling and travel AMA, when we think about creating stories about, you know, things that we encounter or things that we want to document, think of different moments uh, that happen in that process and documenting each of those moments, right? So in this case, we are seeing one moment represented in three, in three yeah. different ways or in three images. But it's kind of the same moment, and that's what you're talking about here, Mike. Right? Maybe, yeah. maybe think about before when they're just going out to to do their um, uh, how do you call this activity? I guess cowboying. See them. I want to see. I want to see them in the stables taking care of the horse. You yes, know? exactly. I'd, right. Exactly. I'd love to. Have, I'd love to have like an intimate portrait of you know the cowboy, right? Maybe just some intimate portraits of, of just just the horse on its own, or the horse sleeping in the stable at night, or what it's like to close up shop, or not just these you know beautifully intense moments. It, it they're throughout this same um, golden hour with high dust, and you know it's yeah, of course it probably creates the most beautiful image, but it's hard to take that image and replicate it over and over to create an actual collection, which is, which is where, you know, maybe one beautiful edition could do really well for this artist in, in this market right now, while they were in the collection. Great. Um, Mike, you cut out for a second there. Did I? Oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, I mean, basically what I'm saying was like, yeah, you know, um, it, it, it's hard to, uh, to create a collection out of the same sort of time of day, same sort of um, action that's happening. But, you know, I think right now might be a good time for that artist to put out a beautiful edition piece while they're working on a more, uh, a more storytelling collection at the same time. Great. Well yeah. said. I think this one's easy though. There's not much feedback to give here, right? Um, so they have um, they have a description. The herd of wild horses created a tremendous cloud of dust because they rolled um, by a group of cowboys. Gorgeous a landscape as a scene from the, a classic Western film. The photographer in uh, Kisari in Turkey uh, was caught by them. Uh, them tens of horses lost uh, lost them by nearly villagers. And I keep them away from villages. I took the photo in the most beautiful hours of sunset. That's the thing. You're taking all the photographs in the same most beautiful hours of sunset, but we live in a three-dimensional world, and we have we you know we have multiple different climates and 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 changes, and 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 you can get close, and you can show macro and detail and portraiture. That's what you want to bring all that together. You know, it says the photo was published by the Times Daily Mail Royalty Fair. I'm sure it was. It's a great photograph. But um, if you want to continue and create a, a nice, cohesive story, then you have to get those other elements. Uh, at the end here, you have um, a website that leads to nothing here. It's HTTPS www. I definitely recommend all the artists go back and look at your look at your um, look at your descriptions. Look at them two times, three times, four times. Show them to people. Ask them. You know, you have some. You know, this has to be fixed, right? Obviously, and um, so I, I recommend everybody goes back and looks at those things. One little thing could cause a collector to not want to collect from you, and that'd be a shame. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And again, just a, a bit more information about the artist as well. For sure. Exactly. Cool. And so, um, move on to the next one. We have three left now. Um, and so this collection is, uh, is about wrestling. This is, uh, a Kirk, uh, Kirk Benar oil wrestling. And this is by, uh, Ender, uh, uh, Ozell. So, um, oil wrestling one one edition. My collection includes photographs taken in 2017 through 2021, four years. Um, the oil wrestling uh, episode one is with you. Enjoy watching in, in 1346, 40 pioneer military units under the command of Ottoman ruler Ohan Agassi stopped in uh, Samoa, which is the territory of today's Greece. On the way back from uh, Rumelia campaign, 40 warriors wrestle here. Uh, it is seen that the two brothers 
uh, whose names are rumored to be Ali and Salim, could not be victorious. Could not be victorious in the wrestling that lasted for hours. Later on, um, uh, Hydrella's day. I don't know how to say that. Um, the same uh, couple again wrestled in uh, Ahikoi Meadow near uh, uh, Adirn. The wrestler Adirne. brother Adirn. Yeah, the wrestler brothers uh, who could not be defeated. Uh, despite wrestling all day, continue to fight in the light of candles and lanterns all night long. However, uh, they die by suffocating uh, where they are. Um, uh, Kirk Kinnar, which was included in the uh, UNESCO, uh, yeah, the, the UNESCO, uh, in, Intangible World Heritage list in 2010, keeps alive the spirit of a tradition that has been going on for 661 years in memory of Ali and Salim. Interesting. Really interesting artist statement. I like the artist statement a lot. Um, not really much room to talk about the actual artist, but if the artist statement is powerful enough, I think that's okay if there's some talk about the artist and the individual descriptions. Um, so, you know, I, I favorited some here. Uh, I got this sorted by, it's sorted by oldest. Um, it looks like it makes a lot more sense when you sort it by oldest. Story makes a lot more sense to me, right? Um, guys, the oil are starting to run off. This is an interesting shot here, where um, where they're putting the oil on the boy who's about to wrestle. Broken C, trying to open this. <laughs> it's not working again. So while you're trying to open this mic, uh, I'll just share what we were discussing yesterday about this collection um, and how those elements, those different moments of the process that you need to highlight uh, uh, if you're doing a storytelling collection, right? So uh, in this collection, we actually see some of that, right? So we see the before, the during and after. So before the actual oil resting, resting process, they're putting oil. Uh, on some of the fighters, then we see some of the moments during the fight. Um, and then we also see a, a quiet moment later. Um, although actually now that I'm looking more at that image, I think that's not quite it. I think it's a person watching the fighters outside. <laughs> so is, it, is, it, is it this one of oh, 41? Uh, no, it's the, sorry, it's the... Uh, oh, here, down here. Exercise, mm -hmm. exercise. Yeah, I thought I this was a after, <laughs> but it's not. It's not quite after image. He's laying down, watching them, but maybe they're in practice. Maybe they're not oh, yeah. in. Yeah, they're probably in practice. Makes sense. Um, but yeah. in general, right? So we want to look at those before sort of moments, during moments, and after moments to give us a cohesive look at the story visually. I think the artist is doing a pretty good job at, at doing that. And there's some really cool, intense shots in here, like this defense shot and the, uh, the uh, Ali's victory shot. There's a lot of emotion in that. Uh, let me just restart just this whole. This whole. Now it's just not on our sides today. <laughs> no. Most of the time it's open sea. All right. So, yeah. So, this shot here I thought was really cool. This defense shot. Really nice detail. See all the muscles, and you see a really uh, frank, a lot of frank in this photograph. And technique: how he's holding his head, and the other man's grabbing his arm. It's a great shot. You got some sweat coming off. Um, love this victory shot. Really feel the victory here. You see all his definition. Strong last All the oil over his pants. Really cool. Um. This shot, you know, I, I, I like the idea of it, but I just, I wish that the photographer didn't overexpose the shot so much because these highlights, there's a lot of detail in the back and we could be seeing the muscles in the back and instead it's just all white and you can, it's, it, the photo is so overexposed that we can't even, if it's a raw file, you wouldn't even be able to pull back the highlights and save that because it's pure white, there's no detail, the detail is lost. So I'd be more careful with them. Um, the camera settings here, but I do like the movement in it, shutter speed. That's probably why you're overexposed, though, because you have a slow shutter speed to show the movement, which allows more light into the lens, which is going to overexpose the body. So 
In a situation like that, you might want to have been using an ND filter or just bringing your ISO like to the lowest possible point. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something a little technical there. Um, yeah, I was trying also to open like, this. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're good. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I also like uh, tired and oily shots. Um, and um, it's the one, it's on the first row there. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. Me too, a lot. Mm -hmm. I like how he, he uses or she uses the uh the, the the negative space here uh, uh the the on the on the bottom of the image um and all the people that are sort of hanging all the fighters that are hanging out behind this guy uh just really goes well with the uh, with the uh, subject tired and oily <laughs> yeah and i love i love how it's layered you got this layer of um mm -hmm. of guys in the back and then you have a fence that layers off guys even further in the back watching a fight. It's a very cool shot. It's one of my favorite shots in this series, I think. Same. But yeah, I think they did a great job at, um, at putting together um, you know, a cohesive body of work. Um, some of these shots were, these two shots where it feels like the subject kind of gets lost in this grass or something. Um, it's interesting, I do like it. <clears throat> but there's some certain standout ones to me. Like the one you pointed out with uh, it's hard and oily and um, defense and the victory, the oil pouring, the exercise being shown outside of this guy's tent. Really mm -hmm. interesting job. And so let's look at the let's look at how they they did. So interesting, great. They have their licenses and the properties. This is one of the first ones I've seen with properties so far, and I'm, I'm very surprised because we're talking so much lately about it with Meta Jungle. And you'd think that more people would implement the properties, but yeah, they have the uh, additions date and all that. So really good, um, really good body of work. The only thing I would say is just perhaps to be more consistent with descriptions because some of them, like uh, the oil, the putting putting oil on the body, has the description of the moment, and then some don't. Uh, like the the image we just described, uh, discussed, tired and oily. That one doesn't have a description of the of the moment itself. So just be be consistent with how you're executing these. Yeah, this doesn't have any description yet, but info about the artist statement. Good call. Cool. And so um, we have two collections left. So next collection is called the uh, the Growing Road, and this is by Tyler James. And a very interesting artist statement here. Uh, this is really cool. So in March of 2021, I was applying for jobs on LinkedIn when I came across a listing for a director of photography position. The production was called The Story of Art in America, a 10 episode docu-series about art in America. Not thinking that I would get the gig I applied. In early May, I had my Zoom interview and was accepted to be director of photography for the production. This would be my first traveling documentary gig as a director of photography and to say I was excited is an understatement. Uh, in the interview, they detailed how the docu-series would consist of a 20-day road trip across the western part of the United States where we would be traveling to six cities and interviewing over 50 artists along the way. During the 20-day production, I experienced six cities I had never been to before, met dozens and dozens of artists, um, uh, artists and city officials, and made over 5,000 combined photos on my Leica Q and uh, Canonet QL17. Uh, these are some of my favorite uh, stories, experiences, and photographs from the trip. So that's pretty wild. So he applied for a job and he got director of art. And um, this is the photographs he took from um, what tw uh, twenty days and how many how many different states is it? To, uh, oh, six six different cities. So really cool. Um, I I want that job. <laughs> me too. And so, you know, first thing first, 50 images, um, 14 owners. That's that's good. Um, so, you know, um, a lot of a lot of activity actually happened, and uh, people caught on to this project and bought. Um, I'm trying to click on the activity, and you can see it's going slow. Um, you know, 50 images though. The idea of just dropping 50 images all at once is a uh, is a lot. You know, 50 images a lot, a lot. It's a lot, a lot. Um, and so. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, I don't know that, you know, this type of story 
maybe maybe needed the whole 50 images to go down at the same time because there's a story about this road trip but in in from a you know from a, a strictly marketing or business standpoint um you know i probably would have dropped like 15 uh of my favorite and then you know got the re got a reaction from that and some sales and then probably you know dropped 15 more um and have 30 and then probably drop the last 20 to equal 50 because i think otherwise it's it takes quite a long time to unless you're patient you want to be patient i think it takes quite a long time to sell out um an entire series of, of 50 images and so um but uh yeah um you know looking over some of these there's some ones that you know that really stood out to me and i had favorited them but it looks like open c took me off of my Oh, I gotta look back in my, my mask. I'm not, I'm not gonna do all this. I favorited a lot of them, and I know which ones they are in my head. So, but is there any that you'd like me to open? Um, yes, I I love the style of this artist, and I love how nostalgic um, a lot of the images look, and how there is a lot of emotion in images that are devoid of people, which is not an easy thing to do. Uh, to 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 communicate emotion in images without people and this artist is doing an excellent job of that um, I love um, these two images if you can pull them up uh, let me see where is it uh, drunk love okay further down drunk love okay let me find it <laughs> yeah it's about halfway through I found it I love that image. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's executed in this way that it, it really stands out in the collection, right? So he's he's using uh, motion uh, to communicate the emotion of it, which I, I I thought it was so brilliant because when you're in love, you cannot see clearly <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and he's communicating that uh, through this image. Um, so I just really loved the that idea of it. Um, I love how it's executed with the wall. The wall seems mm -hmm. like it becomes part of the people. It's very abstract. It's really hard to do a slow shot or speed shot like that that's successful. Exactly. And even even the way that uh, everything is moving uh, with with the shutter speed, it feels like it's it's hearts almost. Like the light from the lamps feels like they're th these little hearts. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a very inter interesting way to execute it. And then the other image that uh, stood out, I mean, there's uh, many excellent shots here. The one that, um, the the other one that I uh, wanted to talk about was table for two. It's when you sort it by all, this is the last image in the collection. Oh, this is table for one. <laughs> okay, our <laughs> table two is your oldest. Yeah, that one stood out to me too. Talk about mm -hmm. it. beautiful. It's just so beautifully executed. Uh, the framing of this sort of, I don't know what it is, a window uh, that he's looking through and how there is, again, nostalgia in this shot. Uh, and you, you feel like people were just here and they maybe left, you know, just a minute ago. You, you can feel the presence of people in this photo. Uh, and you can feel the emotional in this photo, which again, it's hard to do that in an image with no uh, people as subjects. So I think that's just really beautiful. Yeah, and the the, the you know the colors are really beautifully mm -hmm. nostalgic too. They really fit a nice color. I was obviously drawn to this one. I like fairies. I thought this was a beautiful <laughs> one. Sun kissed window. Once again, like that has that nostalgic feeling, the light blue seats, you know, the cup holders, you know, it's, it's exposed beautifully on the inside, but also the outside, you can see the water and the boat. Um, yeah, once again, it has that nostalgic feeling quality. I love these road trip type photos that show you portions of America, they're really beautiful. This shot here, I thought was great too, this closing time. Um, you know, another diner shot. So it's like, yep, you know, it's closed, but the man's cleaning up after a long day at the diner. 
Um, I just noticed something though. There's a huge gap on 0 0.1, and this image costs 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.23, 0 0.4. You have like eight different price points here. It becomes very confusing. 0 0.5. Isn't it confusing to you? This is four ETH. Um, yeah, so that's something that definitely throws like a red flag for me when I see like so many different price points. It's like, ooh, should I buy this one? He doesn't really value it that much, like, but I value it. Or like, should why is this worth four ETH? Um, it's it's is it, it? He still owns this one, right? So he's never sold with anyone. So, but he or she, right? Well, he Tyler. Um, but you know, there's a story behind it. But it's still hard to, it's still hard to, um, you know, go, if you have 0 0.1 and then you go to 4, so this picture's worth 40x, 40 times more than this picture in the same series. Very confusing. Um, and I, I wouldn't know what to do as a collector in that situation. Yes, and I think um, I can relate to feeling like, some of the images in the story are just so special that I want different pricing on them. Uh, in fact, in my own collection, I have one image that, that is higher priced than all the rest. But I, I agree with you that the range is just so high here uh, that I would even think about, well, maybe this image belongs in a different collection. If I, you know, if I feel this very, very certain way about um, American heritage, that is a 4 ETH image, Maybe it belongs in a different collection then. Communicate yeah. that value. Yes, that makes sense. But I would still call down this collection. Um, there's still a lot of images. Um, you know, like, and maybe it's the ones that he's putting for 0 0.1. Like, this shot to me, you know, um, it's just, it's just not as, it's just, it doesn't have as much depth and, and mm -hmm. story and beauty as some of the other ones. It's kind of just like an op you know, open dirt road and in, in maybe in the Midwest or something. But um, and, and there's, yeah, and then there's just some shots that, um, trying to find ones where, you know, like this shot here, where it's like, um, you know, it seems like the same ones that the artist is pricing at like 0 0.1 that, they value them less. I mean, I value them less. I'm looking at them. So maybe they don't belong in this series that should be filled with, you know, strong, beautiful photographs like the sun kissed window and so this silver peaks is a beautiful shot. Love it. love this time of day and this, this golden light on the windows and this like small town suburban, um, you know, maybe just some of them, uh, some of them are just too many. I mean, th this is hard to fit in here too. Not only being black and white, just being, you know, you know, overexposed outside of the other shots that are like very well exposed sort of color film shots, you know, very, mm -hmm. very, very white highlights. Uh, another fairy photograph, but um, I think this could be called down, to be honest, like to it's 50 images. I'd call it down to like a strong 25. I'd cut it in half, you know. I agree. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of images. We can't really get into every single image, but um, beautiful artist statement. Um, let's take a look at the, um, you know, they have one of one, it's digital negative. So these are film. Um, with, you know, but where's the name of the artist, right? Like, what, mm -hmm. like what's, how, how, can, how would I know that the artist's name is Tyler James? Uh, the only reason I found out is because I went to their website. Their website's on here, thankfully. Tyler James, um, but some of the other artists today, they, they didn't have their website on here or any Twitter or anything. And, and I only way you could find their, their name was on, on the spreadsheet and collectors mm -hmm. don't have, the collectors don't have that spreadsheet. So, so, but yep, really nice work, really nice story. Just would call some of those images out and I would work on, you know, having a price point that's closer. Agreed. Well, so that moves us on to um, the last collection, which is um, Super Tramps of uh, India. And this is by uh, 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 Rithu uh, Kumar. And so uh, the, the description is very vague. So um, 
This, this is a collection of photographs which is captured from India. Uh, it includes the faces of different persons who live a life, uh, who live, live you got to change this to life. It's uh, live a life like Chris McCandles, a.k.a. Alexander Supertramp. Now, I didn't know who that was, so I had to Google it, and I found out that's a person who lives this nomadic lifestyle. So this is about a nomadic lifestyle. Um, all photos are, are, are took, you know, if you change that to taken, there's a little bit of language barrier here. All photos are taken using Sony a7 III. I, I don't, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't think that, that the, the, the tool or the device that you use matters that much to have it in the artist statement. I never put what camera I use within my artist statement or anything like that. Um, wall price 0 0.05, very, very low. Sounds more like one, one of one pricing. Um, then we go in to look at the work. And so, um, you know, first thing that I noticed was like that this girl in this photo here, and photo here, and this photo here, and in this photo here, she seems to keep repeating. And she's wearing, um, you know, the same garments in every mm -hmm. photograph. And so what that tells me, let me, let me refresh this open see, is that all those photographs were taken on the same day. And so it's very hard to create a collection with photographs that were taken on the same day. So if I open this, um, you know, these, you know, we have no face, but she's looking off into the distance and she's, she's wearing this, um, this same garment. And that appears um, also um, in this image where we don't see the face and we have the same garment and the same, um, you know, two more, two more times here. Uh, beautiful picture. I love this sun, sun secret image. But maybe we don't need four images from the same sort of shoot with the same, same wardrobe. I really like this one a lot. I feel this, uh, this sense of, of movement, the hair is moving, the, um, the weeds are moving. I really feel this feeling of like happiness and freedom. In that shot? Yes. Right? And then there's just some other random shots you want to talk about, uh, Yulia, that are in this that sort of feel, how do they feel for you? Yeah, so, well, the, the biggest thing for me was, and we discussed this last night, was that we need more information about this story. Uh, people are not going to necessarily have time to Google who Alexander Supertramp is, right? So when you're just having that statement, uh, in the collection, I think it loses a lot of people because then you're looking at the images and, and, and you're not understanding really what's what's happening here. Now, you you did the work and you Googled and you told us that this is about nomadic lifestyle. So that in that context then starts to make a little bit more sense, right? Um, but even 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 then, for example, uh, the image of the animal sort of comes out of nowhere here. Uh, to me because we are looking at several images of people doing different things. There is a man smoking, uh, this lady who is, you know, experiencing uh, a moment of freedom, which that actually fits quite well with the story of digital nomads and, and being a nomad and being on the go. But the animals, that, that image seems to me that it's a, a bit, it comes a bit out of nowhere. Um, in this it's also, there's also no real way of knowing this man even is a villain, right? I mean, it's just a panoramic photo from his, you know, chest up of him smoking. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the artist just really liked this photograph and they were like, oh, this is a really good one. I'm putting it in my collection. But, you know, save those good ones because they might fit into another collection that actually has a storyline that makes more sense. So, you know, just because you have a, you know, and we talked about this yesterday, you have a tonally, like, this is a really cohesive collection. The tones are all the same, but mm -hmm. it's not enough to make a collection cohesive. It's like a lot of people will make everything black and white and then they think they can just throw a bunch of black and white images together and have this cohesive story and it just doesn't work that way. It might help you a little bit, but it won't get past the people that are really trying to read into the story. And so... Um, I think it. Yeah, I think we need to revisit the idea of nomadic lifestyle and, and, and revisit some of the people that actually live this lifestyle and build a collection over a, a long period of time before you know it's going to cohesively fit and feel like. 
Yeah, I agree. And uh, and this is, again, this is a challenge that I feel like a lot of us are, are, um, are working on, right? Just because the images are visually uh, executed in a similar way doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they fit in the same collection. So we really have to think about what is the story I'm trying to tell here and how does each of the images advance that story or adds to the narrative that I'm trying to pull together here. Really well said, exactly. So yeah, um, a lot a lot of stuff needs to be added to this artist description, um, including about you know who 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 Alexander Supertrap or Chris McCandles actually is. Explain that here. Um, talk a little bit about yourself as an artist. Why maybe why you're drawn to a nomadic lifestyle? I find nomadic lifestyles to be super interesting, but I, I want to know why you, you feel that way as well. Um, and how about the descriptions we had? information with the artist edition about me so there's some information about them but in, in individual pictures licensing or 20 percent sales will go to charity well, well what charity what charity will they go to how, how do we go to the will um yeah um that's it that's really all i got on this i think a big takeaway from today though is that um a lot of people have a hard time of not taking great photographs but actually like sequencing them in an order to actually tell a story and have um, certain images speak to the next thing and create that, that story and have all the different perspectives and details. And the best thing is to look at the documentary stories that are successful and what they did and, and all the different perspectives that they were looking from and the, um, the, the relationships that they created with the people that they documented and how much time they spent doing it. Um, another big takeaway I think from today was a lot of people are missing their name within their OpenSea account. They're missing links to all their socials. Very difficult for a collector to be able because collectors they don't they they're not, they're not they don't all just pick up because they like a beautiful piece of work. They kind of want to know about you too. So if they can't find information on you, it it might just be they might just click on and move on to the next collection. We're such a saturated market now with so many stories and so many photographs that you know you really want to take the time to get into your open c account and make sure all your properties look great make sure all your descriptions look great make sure that they can find you um and you know that that if you have a problem with the language barrier or your part of statement that you're you're networking and reaching out to people that can help you to you know run that other statement by them run your photographs uh, between a set of eyes two sets of eyes three sets of eyes before you put that would be the biggest takeaway for me from today. Yeah, so well said, Mike. And uh, just one more that I would add to that is always err on the side of less is more. Uh, if you're if you're if you're having an impulse to add more images to your collection, uh, I think uh, having being able to tell a a story with less images is more powerful than having too many repetitive images uh, in a collection that don't advance that narrative forward. Perfectly well said. So yeah, so I mean, thanks again, Yulia, for taking the time to, uh, to sit and talk about storytelling. You have some great things to say about um, how to advance and how to advance your story and that less is more, all huge points. And um, thanks to all the artists that came out today. There's a lot of great artwork and a lot of good points to touch on. And like I always say, you don't have to be picked as an artist to come in here and listen to one session and understand everything there is that there is for you to need to do to go and advance your own collection. So. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Yulia, for uh, putting time into this. We appreciate it a lot. So. Cool. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye now. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much, everyone.